Fantasy Ed with Jonathan Chan, Kevin Quo, Richard Seville. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Fantasy Edge. I'm Jonathan Chen, alongside Kevin Wolf. Richard Seville is going to be taking the uh, the night off today, so this could be the uh, the two of us. Many memes, many shots fired. Uh, Kevin, how's it going? Going on, man. Um, ready to get these hot takes off. Oh yeah, we finally get a chance for hot takes without Richard on here. <laughs> We're going to be unleashed. We're going to in all our ridiculousness. Oh yes. Uh, well, let's start off with the first. I guess talking about ridiculousness, the most ridiculous franchise in the NFL. Uh, the Redskins fired Jake Gruden today. Was this a move that uh, was expected coming off an over five start? Yeah, I mean, at this point, there there was no other move for them to make. Um, everyone just sucks. So you know, front office is of course going to try and find someone to pin it on, and and you know, Drake, Jay Gruden's the easy target given, you know, that he's the head coach. But uh, uh, going forward, it, it's going to be just as ugly. So I don't know if I'm a Redskins fan, I'm, I'm just hiding away until I guess December is over. I mean, coming out of this fantasy wise, the only thing people are actually asking is, are they still going to force feed Terry McLaurin, which theoretically they should, but Bill Callahan, you never know what's going to happen there. Yeah, I mean, I guess they have to. I mean, it's literally everyone on that team is like, wouldn't start for another team except for Terry McLaurin. So um I guess they have to. I mean, it depends on which quarterback they start, I guess. I'm not sure. Which quarterback do you think they're going to go with rolling out? They they realistically can't go Haskins. So once Keenum comes back, they have to go him. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, Colt McCoy is just, he's he's just a career backup. Like you're not, there's no chance. You forfeit the game if you roll him out as a starter. So you might as well just go with Keenum. Yeah. I mean, Keenum looked okay for a couple of games early on, but defense wasn't helping him out in any way. Yeah, it's just a mess. Yeah, mess all around. Uh, speaking of a mess, we have the Mason Rudolph injury in the Steelers Ravens game, uh, took a shot to the head second QB in two weeks to go down with an injury like this. And there was a whole controversy around the NHL or sorry, the NFL with, you know, the cart didn't work. They had to push him off and he wants to walk off under his own power. Is there any, I guess, issues that you're seeing or that you're agreeing with any of these, you know, the hot take angry tweets coming out toward the NFL around this whole concussion protocol? I mean, you kind of have to. Like, <laughs> I was watching that game live and I legitimately, there was maybe 10% of me that thought Mason Rudolph literally might have just died. Like, it looked horrible. Yeah. Um, like, they were like tapping his chest. He wasn't responding. It was crazy. So, I mean, for that guy to have to walk it off, it's just a bad look. Like, no matter how it is in reality, like it's just a bad look. You gotta have the card out for for something like that. Yeah, for sure. And we're gonna we're we're gonna touch on this later, of course, with our game reviews. But um, Steelers position players, skill players, where where are they headed now with Devlin or Delvin Hodges moving forward as a QB? Is, is that his name? I had no idea what his name was. Yes. Um, good on you for knowing his name. But yeah, it's it's all bad. Um, there, there's not much more I can say. It, it's all bad. I I can't really imagine. I mean, they had a third string quarterback. Uh, they traded him, I think, to I want to say the Browns before the season started, or maybe the Bills. But anyways, they traded him. So this Devlin Hodges guy, I'm not even sure how many reps he's possibly gotten to take. Um, it, I can't imagine it's going to go well. Uh, arrows down all the way for James Conner, further than they already were, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. What is this guy? Samford University. <laughs> I just, oh man. Um, well, I mean, the one thing I was watching the game is, is like. He he's kind of like a like a runner like that kind of stuff. So I mean, if you're super duper desperate, you know, just hope for the Tim Tebow. Boy, that's that's desperate. Hoping for Tebow out of your QB. Come on. Yeah, I'm a right. Tebow guy. I wouldn't even hope for that. <laughs> oh, I mean, I'm just trying to be positive, man. I mean, the Steelers traded their first round pick, so uh, I'm I'm sure they're going to try to compete with whatever Hodges can do. Ooh, imagine Miami with the first and second picks. I mean, it, it could happen. Like the Steelers are with Hodges. I can't. I mean, the, I mean, there's a lot of bad teams in the NFL. Um, the Dolphins, obviously, the Redskins. We talked about them. I think the Steelers with their third string quarterback probably are worse than the Cardinals. Probably worse than the Bengals. I, I, that pick's gonna be top five if if Mason Rudolph can't come back. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, uh speaking of injuries, uh, Saquon Barkley proving to be. At least half of Wolverine coming back in, what, two, two and a half weeks from his uh, reported six to eight weeks out. Do you think he comes back for Thursday night against the Pats? I, <laughs> when I first saw this headline, I thought it was like, okay, yeah, sure, whatever. He's going to come back. I'm sure. And then I saw the video of him in warmups <laughs> and he looks more healthy than any human has ever been. So 
Yeah, I mean, I think the one thing is that it's Thursday night football. I think if, if this was a Sunday game, I'd give them like an 80% shot of suiting up. But yep. for Thursday night, yeah, I don't really know. I don't think so. Yeah, as I was gonna say, Thursday night, uh, the short week plus Thursday against the Pats. Don't know if it's worth really bringing him back against that. But knowing Saquon, if he's, if he's at 75%, I'm sure he'll demand that he play. Yeah, I mean, part of me just wants to see him out there. Because I, there's there's this image in my mind that I have of Eli just jogging off the bench to beat Brady one more time. And it would help him a lot if Saquon was out there for that. How do you plan on getting Dan Jones off the field? I mean, like, maybe he catches Mono too. Like, I don't want to <laughs> put an injury on him. But I need to see Eli versus Brady one more time. And then if Eli wins this game, like, nothing will make me happier. Trust me. Like, oh, the undefeatable Patriots 5-0. and played a bunch of suckers for their first five games, but oh my God, their defense is so good. And then Eli comes in and just rips them apart and then promptly goes back to the bench. It'd be fantastic. I think I think what you're hoping for is Daniel Jones has like a slight stomach flu. He has to go go to the bathroom for a couple series. Eli comes in, scores two TDs, and then Jones comes back in. That's all you need. That's your that's all you're hoping for. That's what I'm saying. Like I just need to see Eli out there with like the like the goofy look on his face. <laughs> like Belichick standing on the sideline. What the hell just happened? Eli just hit Darius Slayton for a forty six yard touchdown. Like nothing would make me happier. And then at the second series, he's going to throw a pick six. But you got to even it out, man. <laughs> uh, classic Eli. Um, I guess more another uh, top running back injury news. Uh, David Johnson's having issues once again with his back. Uh, he had a decent game, so he didn't have a bad game uh, against the Bengals. But uh, back injury flared up. Uh, Chase Edmonds came in, scored a short uh, short yards touchdown, I believe. Uh, oh, 37 yard touchdown, excuse me. And um, do you think they're going to start giving Edmonds a little bit more work to kind of save DJ for for whatever later in the season next season just make sure yeah, he doesn't I, fall apart get that I'm old man back that mike williams has i was wondering what you're gonna say i was like saving i'm like for saving for one. what yeah i caught, I yeah. caught myself i saved it um i don't know i mean if, if you're the cardinals your next two games are against the falcons who stink the giants who stink and then you've got a couple of rough games games against the, like, the saints the niners the bucks the niners the rams okay actually the schedule is looking pretty tough but I mean, if he can play through it, I think you want him out there just to, you know, develop Kyler. You don't want Kyler to just go out there and, and lose games. But if his back is actually a problem, then then yeah, you kind of have to sit him. And Chase Edmonds is actually pretty decent, I think. And also running backs don't matter. So um, I think you probably just sit him if he's actually hurt. Do running backs really not matter? I think Christian McCaffrey's proven that that's just false. Yeah, I mean, I guess, but it's like the top three running backs, man. I'm not sure David Johnson is that good. You not know, like, anymore. He's great. Yeah. yeah, but he's not like it's it's not even like the Cardinals lean on him that much. I guess he is kind of like a like a multifaceted weapon out of the backfield, but I think Chase Edmonds can probably do 75% of what he does. Plus, you know, like Mer- Kyler is running all over the place now. So, yeah, Kyler on that uh I think his 24 yard earlier in the game, he almost broke it. If he had just a little bit more time around that the um the secondary, he would have broke that for a touchdown. But Yeah. I mean, he looked good. As soon as he figures out how to throw touchdowns in the red zone, he'll be uh, even better. Yeah, I don't know if he'll ever figure that out. He's so small. I don't know. It's so weird. He's at, what, 2% touchdown rate, but he's still a top 10 QB. So worth, I guess. That air, that air raid offense, man, that's what we were all looking for. And like you said, against the Falcons and Giants next couple weeks, if somebody uh, doesn't feel like having Kyler on the team anymore, great couple yeah. weeks to uh, figure out him. complete wrong logic. It's, it's against this is the Kyler. Falcons. Yeah, it's against the Falcons and the Giants, so they maybe they can they think they can rest David Johnson and win those. Games. Yeah, I'm sure Kyler's going to throw 50 times a game. I, I'm not even kidding. No, it might happen. Yeah. All right. Uh, last piece of news here: Chris Herndon not injured, but coming back from suspension. Uh, he's being, I guess, he has to come back, and they're going to evaluate his readiness to play. Um, if he plays, he's he has to be startable with the way tight end is now, right? Yeah, absolutely. I'm I'm waiting to just start him over. I have OJ Howard, and I'm looking for this first opportunity to jump off the ship. If Herndon catches like four was, balls, wait, was, was that a pirate joke? Jump off the ship? It wasn't, was that a pirate I'm, joke? I'm, I'm taking credit. For, yeah, totally. <laughs> you know, puns all day. It's all I got is puns. But um, man, I just thought of a an OJ pun, which was not good. So um, no, let's not let's not use that one on <laughs> our first show. <laughs> let's not let's not go that one on the first show. Um, but you know, I'm I'm glad I have this platform so that I can speak freely about the Jets. It's not even the Jets. It's it's more so just Adam Gase. I cannot believe this man has a job. He is supposedly an offensive like genius coordinator or something like that. He scored four offensive touchdowns in his last seven games, which they've lost a combined 201 to 80. He's 0 for 17 on his last 
the 17 third down conversions. Like, I get it. Luke Falk stinks, but you have personnel control also. So that's also your fault. Um, I mean, on top of that, like the, the news that came out with Sam, Dar- he gave Sam Darnold all the first team reps this week until Friday, which was basically a walkthrough. But Sam Darnold wasn't even cleared for contact. Like, what the hell are you doing? Like, you you have a guy who needs to play a game. It's it's crazy. Like, I don't think Gase is going to last. I don't know. I, I think they're going to give him one more chance, maybe two more chances with Darnold, and it's going to go poorly, and then they're going to have to get him out of there. Yeah, I mean, for the rest of his life, Gase can thank Peyton Manning for giving him multiple jobs. Just it's crazy. Yeah, I mean, it's I, awful. I can't believe someone thought. I, I, I get, like, you can talk yourself into him as a coach, but why would you give him personnel control? Yeah, that, that one didn't re- really make a. Uh, it literally sense. never worked. It only worked with Belichick. Yep. The coach personnel thing doesn't, and like I said, it never works. It's never a recipe for success. But I hate that the Patriots are, just get the Jets every year. It's stupid. They get the Jets, they get the Bills, they get the Dolphins every year. Hey, hey, the Bills are good this year, all right? The Bills are decent. Don't blame the schedule. The Bills are actually, you know, decent this year. Once they start facing teams with not 0-4 records, they'll, 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 they'll get worse, but still. It's ridiculous. Uh, okay, let's move on to our, I guess, our game reviews. Uh, we're going to go through each game, top performers, main takeaways. Let's start with the Thursday Nighter, probably my favorite my favorite game of the week. Uh, came right down to the wire, and Greg Zerlein missed the, uh, missed the game-winning field goal. I was not expecting that. The bar, the bar went crazy. Uh, fun game, and... I guess my main takeaway from this one is that Cooper Cup is a legitimate wide receiver one now. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty undeniable. Uh, nine catches for seven of 17 targets, which is just insane target share, considering that, you know, there's, you know, the three wide receivers plus Gurley plus Everett had 11 targets. For him to get yep. 17 targets is pretty insane for 117 yards and a touchdown. Yeah, I mean, Cup is, I, I don't know, man. Like, how do you tear your ACL and then come back and look like this? It's pretty crazy. Did you read the report where he said he, like, when he was hurt? learn how to run? Yeah, he just started run. run motion. Like, yep. that's psychopathic stuff. <laughs> That's Kobe stuff. Yeah, exactly. That's like, oh, like, I don't get it. Um, But yeah, Cup is only going to be more valuable because Brandon Cook's left with a concussion. I feel like he's always concussed. Like that one Super Bowl where he literally like ran backwards into a massive hit and cost the Patriots a Super Bowl. Yeah, that one. All right. Come on, man. Can you think about the concussion and not so much about the loss of the Super Bowl? We're talking about a man's health here. He came back. He was fine like a week later. I'm not sure he was fine. (laughs) Just like I'm not sure Edelman is ever fine when he takes like a huge hit. I mean, Edelman pushes through it. He's, I don't think he's ever fully healthy, but he gets through it. That's what I'm saying. You're heartless, dude. You're just a typical Pats fan. Just heartless. <laughs> you have to be heartless. That's how yeah. you get rings. Sitting here on the sidelines. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Uh, other takeaways, like you said, Gerald Everett, um, he had 11 targets, caught seven for 136 yards. This is his second straight big game. Now, over the last two weeks, he has 180 yards and, and a touchdown. He's the tight end pickup for the week and possibly could be the waiver wire pickup of the week because the waiver wire has been absolutely barren for the last uh, last couple of weeks. Everybody's already been picked up unless you want Devlin Hodges or whoever Wayne Gallman's backup is in New York. I think his name is John Hilleman. Um, Gerald Everett, number one uh, number one waiver target this week. Yeah, I mean, by default, uh, just because you, you're probably starting a terrible tight end. So if you can get one in a good offense, uh, I'd probably just do it. Yep. And like you said, Cooks is out with the concussion. Uh, Tyler Higby's there as well, but Everett looked really, really good on Thursday. Um, he looked fast. A couple of times I thought he might have been Robert Woods from a bad angle, but who's to say I was at the bar? So that could just be me. Um, on the Seahawks side, Will Disley had a big game again. Um, the Seahawks clearly want to get him involved, and they make plays specifically to get Disley the ball. Um, you made a Disley trade in uh, in our league, right? It was, you gave away Disley. Yeah, I traded Disley for Tom Brady. Um, I think my quarterback going into the season was Cam. That didn't work out. Picked up yep. Daniel Dimes, not really working out. But I have Austin Hooper, so I don't know. Pick between the two, and that's I'm that's I'm not sure. Trade. I, I'm not sure I picked the right one. I think at the end of the year, Disley might outplay Hooper. I mean, Hooper had a good game. Hooper's been consistent, more consistent yeah, than he's been. So, and the Falcons have to throw because their defense sucks. So. Yeah. I think it'll work out. Yep. Um, I guess the worrying thing from this game, Seahawks wise, is Tyler Lockett. If he didn't catch that ridiculous thing in the like throw in the back of the end zone, he has a terrible game. Just yeah, awful. I mean that's just Tyler Lockett. He's been like that the last two years, basically. Just like yeah. oh, if you take away this play, he was awful. If you take away you know such and such plays, uh, he's just a wide receiver three. But the problem is that he makes those plays. Yeah. So you know it's it's hard to judge. I personally really like Tyler Lockett. Um, the emergence of Metcalf is a bit worrying just because I thought Lockett was just going to get a huge target share, but you know, he's still serviceable. I like Lockett. 
All right, moving on to second game. Uh, Pat's Redskins. There's nobody on the Redskins side other than McLaurin, who was had a couple of you know passes forced to him. He looked good against Stephon Gilmore, but otherwise, nothing doing there. On the Pat's side, Sony Michelle had a really good game, uh, 91 yards and a touchdown. Um, is this kind of the start? Of Sony Michelle's resurgence, or was it just you know thanks Redskins? Let's let's move on. I I tend to personally think that Michelle is being you know unfairly shit on basically. Like there's he was dominant in the playoffs. So it's like there's no denying this. He was good in college. So for him to just all of a sudden be a bad running back, it doesn't make any sense. So I think maybe the first three four weeks, either game script or you know um, he's shaking off some rust from some offseason surgery might have been a factor. But I think Michelle is someone that I was trying to buy in on, and I think that window might have closed. Um, we do have to consider that Rex Burkhead was out this game, which always kind of uh, muddies things up a little bit. But I think Mich- Michelle is going to be good going forward. He just still gets such a high volume of like red zone touches that it kind of makes him worth it. Yeah, I think Michelle's got the, I guess, the LeGarrette Blunt role. Like, you know, if you know the Pats are going to be winning the game, Michelle's going to get the points. Um, he's going to get the touchdowns, but he's, I guess, that, I guess, but the high volume and the consistent volume is iffy because White and Burkhead are just significantly better receivers. But like I said, he's going to get more carries than the two of them. It depends on what he does with it, right? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, I think Mich- Michelle is one of the, like, if you had, if you put a gun to my head and said, pick five running backs who are going to score a touchdown this week, like, just outside of matchups and opponents or anything like that, M- Michelle would pretty safely be on my list. Yep. All right, moving on to a more competitive game. Um, Jags at Panthers. Gardner Minshew had the best game of his career, 374 yards, two touchdowns. Uh, one of three QBs to be over 16 points. Oh. Uh, I think we have some breaking news here from Richard. Uh, Baker Mayfield has been benched in the fourth quarter of the uh, the Monday Nighter here with the Browns and and 49ers. He finishes he finishes eight of twenty two for hundred yards and two interceptions. Ah, Poor boy. Who's the backup? Is it um what's his name? Hogan. Tech dude. What? It's like some guy from is he like from Texas Tech or something like that? Garrett Gilbert. Garrett Gilbert. It is. Oh my god. That's this is bad. Oh, Baker has bad. been really really bad. Um. I didn't get a chance to watch much of this game. I think I saw the first quarter. But is there anything that you saw with Baker that was off this game, if you had a chance to watch? Um, I watched, yeah, like the first quarter. And Baker is just, he's holding the ball too long. Um, that offensive line, we I think we talked about it at the beginning of the season. I definitely had it as a concern when I wrote the offensive line rankings. The offensive line is not good. And especially with the San Francisco pass rush. What I saw in the first quarter was they were just closing in on him and he just couldn't make a decision fast enough. He was holding the ball and just eating sacks. He didn't need to eat and throwing passes under pressure. I think he's forcing himself to make, like try to make a play. He's trying to play the hero and it's just not working out. Like that team isn't built for that. And disappointing, uh, disappointing start. We'll see if Cleveland can turn around as uh, I guess, hopefully the offensive line can do something, but. Oh my God. This means that. All right, I'm checking my fantasy league. I'm up 1.2 points. Thank you, <laughs> Niners defense. Let's go. Oh, boy. Let me check my league. I'm up by 70. I had the Philly D and Breda. You, you disgust. <laughs> Sorry, I had to throw that out there. I was 0-4. I needed that win, all right? Just That's let me fair. have it. All right, back to regularly scheduled discussion. Uh, Jags and Panthers. Gardner Minshew, again, 374, two touchdowns. Only one of three QBs to be over 16 points every game. It was him, Kyler Murray, and Patrick Mahomes. Is Gardner Minshew a legitimate starting option the rest of the year? <laughs> I, somehow, I think so. Like, I think, like, I watched a lot of this Jags Panthers game, and I think Gardner Minshew is actually good. Like, he he is very accurate. He makes good decisions. His arm strength is, like, just good enough. Like, you saw, like, the deficiencies when he was just, like, chucking Hail Mary. Somehow he had a bunch of opportunities, and all of them just came short of the end zone. But, like, it's he's, like, that prototypical, not prototypical quarterback, but, like, a guy who wasn't given a shot because he's not prototypical size, but he's just, like, a winner, and he's just, like, a playmaker. And I think he's actually good. Yeah, I mean, he, he looks good. The, uh, you know, he's turned DJ Chark into a top five receiver so far through the season. Finished, uh, finished Sunday with 160. 64 yards and two touchdowns if hey if it works it works but you know nick Foles is always going to be in my head lives rent free after that super bowl but uh, <laughs> it's gonna be interesting to see what they do with Foles after the big contract um when he's able to come back yeah that's fair i mean i think if i'm the jaguars um i'm legitimately i mean maybe next season looking at trading Foles or Minshew. i don't know like i think garner Minshew is is going to be a starter in this league for a while 
it's the mustache magic has to be yeah i mean the swag like i don't know like if you listen to this podcast called mixtape podcast they have a theory that just cool quarterbacks succeed and i'm starting to just believe it well he looks good we'll see if that continue uh well we talk we don't really talk about the panthers we talked about christian mccaffrey being basically fantasy cheat code already now the receivers did their thing let's move on to the cardinals bengals um we talked about david johnson we talked about Kyler murray um joe mixon finally had a a good game a decent game anyways 93 yards 19 carries i know you're not a fan of mixon but do you think the, the Bengals can get him more involved moving forward using this as i know it was against the cardinals but do you think joe mixon can put can uh can get it back or do you think this is a sell medium for his owners yeah i'm, I'm kind of sell medium for mixon i just don't really see it um and i think the offense is kind of limited uh, 19 carries to 93 yards is pretty good but like I don't ever see him like putting up like Dalvin Cook numbers or anything like that. He's he's pretty limited. The off he's not going to score a lot of touchdowns because the offense isn't great. Um, Dalton wants to throw the ball a ton. Like Tyler Boyd had 14 targets, uh, and AJ Green is coming back. And and so like while people might say, oh, that frees up mixing a little bit, I think that just means Dalton's going to throw the ball even more. Yeah, especially with the bad defense, it's not going to. Hey, but Dalton's a good QB streamer now, or even a uh, if you're you know desperate, Dalton's a good option. Yeah, I think- yeah, I mean, I think if you get Dalton against a decent enough matchup, like he's just going to put up numbers. They're worthless. I think he had like 23 passing yards a half. Like he's awful still. Oh, yeah, but he's like that 2016 Blake Bortles, you know, just garbage time to fantasy championships. That's what we're doing here, man. You know, we got to find those gems. Uh, you got to find that Matt Breda run every every game. One run for 80 yards and the rest of them go for a combined 20. But that the one is all you need. Hey, he caught a touchdown too. He did. Matt is uh, good. Matt he Breda. is good. I know, but I'm just waiting for him to get hurt. That's why they're not giving him carries. I can't really argue with that. Uh, all right, let's move on. Uh, the super disappointing Falcons versus the incredibly inconsistent Texans. Uh, Matt Ryan did his Matt Ryan thing, threw some garbage time, threw a, threw, threw a pick and, you know, trying to come back. Uh, Devonta Freeman, again, can't get anything going on the ground. The Falcons' offensive line is terrible. Um, Julio Jones has only had 14 targets in the last two games when Matt Ryan has thrown it 99 times over the last two weeks. Um, are, should Julio owners be concerned? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, it's the same thing with DeAndre Hopkins, who's on the other side of the ball. We'll probably have this conversation too. Like, what are you going to do? Like, you're going to bench him? They're not. You're going to trade him? I don't think anyone will give you anything that you feel is fair. So I think you just kind of just have to hold on and, and just hope that like Calvin Ridley also catches mono or something like that. Like just, I, I don't know. Like, Why is it always mono? Why has it got to be mono? Why can't it just be like the flu? That also keeps people out. Mono is like, a serious yeah. thing, man. Mono is like in the news, you know, it's like the flu. <laughs> Who's thinking about the flu? But everyone's thinking about mono. Uh, that's fair. It's the only time I can use this joke. No one's got mono in years. I've never <laughs> heard of an athlete having mono. Oh, this happened a, th- a couple of years ago. Might've been in, in baseball. I don't remember. I'll have to look it up. No one cares about baseball. Come on, man. That's the other half of my fantasy contributions. <laughs> uh, on the Texan side, everybody's talked about what Will Fuller did. He's the first 50-point uh, fantasy performance since Julio in 2017. Uh, 217 yards, three touchdowns, 14 catches on, what, 17 targets? Just an unbelievable day. Meanwhile, Hopkins owners are out here with seven catches, only 88 yards. Um, um it's has DeAndre Hopkins been a mirage for the last three years with his, I guess, the the pure volume he was getting when Will Fuller and everybody else is injured. And is this going to be the new the new regular for Nuke? <laughs> I think you're overreacting a little bit. No, I think, I'm absolutely not. <laughs> I think Nuke is pretty clearly the more talented guy. Um, no, I don't. I don't mean that Fuller is going to be the number one. It's just, oh, okay, yeah. we not? You know, are we just not to expect you know massive games from Nuke every game because there are other options for Watson to throw to? I totally understand what you mean. At the same time, I, I think you know it, it's kind of like yes, the volume matters, but like he's just not getting the same like scoring opportunities. But like you know, eventually he's going to tack one on. You know, he's going to have a good game. You know, he's going to take advantage. I think the Will Fuller thing only helped. You know, like. Defense is having to pay more attention to Will Fuller. It can't be a bad thing for DeAndre Hopkins. Yeah. I guess the question now is how long until Fuller gets hurt, his yearly hamstring injury, and then and then Hopkins owners can really capitalize. I give him like three weeks. Um oh, Carlos Hyde, another touchdown. Um still holding him, right? I you know I I can't stand Carlos Hyde. <laughs> I know. But I just gotta make sure because he's actually been doing good. And Duke Johnson has been completely phased out. Cannot believe it. <laughs> uh moving on to the Bucks and Saints. Um not a high score, not as high scoring as I thought it would be. Um, I guess the biggest story out of this game was I don't know. You want the the, the bad story or the good story? Uh, you know me. I always like the bad. 
All right. Uh, what the hell happened to Mike Evans? Um, was the Saints D just that that on him, or was it something up with Jameis and the, their connection, or what was it? No, it, it's it, I think it's legitimately Marshawn Lattimore. I think he is the newest shutdown quarter corner. Like he shut down Evans, he shut down uh, Amari Cooper last week. He, I think he, who was the who they play in week two? I don't remember, but I think it was Lattimore, the Rams. It was the Rams because there was that fumble controversy, wasn't there? Hmm. Yeah, good good memory. But um yeah, I think Marshawn Lattimore is just like the next lockdown corner. I mean, he he shadows, he travels. Um you got to downgrade your receivers and they play him. Obviously, like I don't expect a guy like Mike Evans to have zero catches on three targets when they're playing against him, but you do I think you do have to downgrade when you're playing Marshawn Lattimore. Yep, and of course the beneficiary of Marshawn Lattimore for the Bucks was uh, Chris Godwin. He got on the you know, the other the other members of the secondary and he had 125 yards, two touchdowns. Um He's been really, really good all season. Uh, way better than I was expecting. Is this more of a 1A, 1B situation in Tampa? Where we can expect like on-off games for both of them? Or is Godwin just going to be you know, continuous you know, wide receiver one territory the rest of the season? No, I mean, I think, I think it's going to be 1A, 1B. But I, I think there's cause to believe that they both can be successful in a given week. Um, I think they're both just that good. Um, this offense is, you know, with, with Ronald Jones and, and Peyton Barber being serviceable, I think that opens it up a lot for them to take these downfield shots that Bruce Arian loves to do. So I think both of them can be playable. I think Godwin is right now the wide receiver one on the season. So it's definitely not a fluke. I think he's, I think he and Mike Evans are like 1A, 1B, like you said. I, and I think it's closer than a lot of people would think. Yeah. And, you know, the on the other side of the ball, the Saints, of course, Michael Thomas had uh, one of the best games of his career, 11 catches, 182 yards, two touchdowns. Uh, Teddy Bridgewater coming in and kind of fulfilling a little that potential that uh, people were hoping for when he got drafted. Um, do you think that's something that's going to continue, or was that more of a uh, Bucks defense kind of uh, assisted game? Yeah, I have no idea because the, the Bucks defense is – good actually i think they're pretty solid so it was surprising to see teddy kind of go off like he did um that being said i i don't know if he's going to do this week to week um it just seems he he doesn't seem like that kind of quarterback who's just taking aggressive shots downfield he's going to make a lot of big plays uh but i don't know maybe he will be but what i saw in the first two weeks that he started was not that at all so i'm a little bit wary of it yep uh, moving on, I guess the one of the more interesting quarterback storylines of the week was Kirk Cousins getting called out by everybody. Um, he had to personally apologize to Adam Thielen for being garbage, and he came out. He came out pretty well. Uh, three hundred six yards, two touchdowns. Thielen had a great game, one hundred thirty two touchdowns. Um, Stephon Diggs struggled again. Just had four targets. Is he getting traded? Yeah, he's getting traded. I think. I mean, you saw the the press conference, right? Well, not the press conference, but the locker room thing where he was like, what do you say? They were like, oh, do you want to stay in Minnesota? And he was like, of course I do. And then he winked like he's <laughs> I think he's out of there. Like, I mean, I I think think he's out of there. the Vikings, I don't know. It's just a mess. You see, did you see uh, the report about the CFL quarterback, Bo Levi Mitchell? That was, I did uh, see that. Yeah, just- that was crazy. You're you're not allowed to take Kirk Cousins' job. Yeah, that's you're, great. You're that like what? You're not trying to make your team better. Come on, man. That's just a weird situation. Yeah. Hey, what guaranteed happened? money? Is that guy Sloter still on his uh, still on the the Vikings? The guy who's killing uh, the preseason? I don't know. I honestly don't know. Oh, Cardinals. Oh, that's unfortunate. Uh, moving on to the like the Giants side of the ball. Um. Daniel Jones has not been what he was the first week. I don't think anybody can really expect it. But the biggest story for the Giants is uh, Darius Slayton. He second, I guess, second time in three games he's had you know a big catch, and now he's looking like he could be one of the bigger targets for for New York. Now that Sterling Shepard could be out multiple weeks with a concussion, um, are you adding Slayton in twelve team leagues, or is he more of a wait and see kind of player? Um, to me, he's kind of a wait and see type of player. Like I don't really see the upside with Giants receivers, to be honest. Um, like, you've got Golden Tate, who's still there. Eventually, he'll be involved. Evan Ingram is going to be the number one. Whenever Saquon gets back, it's going to be there. And I don't think Daniel Jones, while, like, we have to cut him some slack because he's playing the Vikings. Next week, he's got the Patriots. That might be even worse. Um, like, he's still a rookie quarterback, so he's going to be inconsistent. Um, yeah, so Darius Lane, uh, I'll let someone else burn their waiver wire. Yep, for sure. Um, moving on, I guess Raiders and Bears wasn't the most exciting game. Uh, Josh Jacobs kind of uh, rehashed his week one performance. He had 123 yards, two touchdowns. Uh, great game. The volume is going to be there for him the rest of the year. Uh, David Montgomery, you know, a little bit of a preseason hype uh, hype guy, but it hasn't really been efficient. Is this the Bears offense limiting him or is it 
I guess, or sorry, is it the Bears offense, I, I guess as a whole, or is it more Montgomery and the Raiders defense not helping out there? I mean, I, I think it's the Bears offense. I, I think they're not really functioning at a high level. It seems like they can't commit to what they want to do. Like sometimes they seem to want to pass the ball a ton and they got Tariq Cohen out there. And sometimes they seem to want to power run it and they're just not picking one. Um, the, split, the snaps were split 50-50 between Montgomery and Cohen this week, which is, is not a great sign for Montgomery. But I, I feel like Montgomery is like one of those, uh, what you want to call it? Like he's got to get in his groove. Like he, he's going to get better. Like kind of like Leonard Fournette, where just like if you give him 20 carries, like he'll just end up with 80 yards. Like he'll just be better with more carries. And the fact that they're just not committing to him. Part of it was they were coming from behind, but part of it is, I don't know, they haven't committed to him consistently all season. So, I don't know, hopefully something will click and, and they'll kind of turn the backfield over to him. And, of course, on the Raiders' side, they just traded for Zay Jones uh, from the Buffalo Bills. This is not a fantasy-relevant move, right? Nobody's rushing to go pick up Zay Jones, especially with Derek Carr at quarterback. Yeah, I'm not... I, I, I get it. It's a nice depth trade. Fifth-round pick seems a little bit pricey, considering Zay Jones really wasn't even playing for the Bills. Um, I guess you get a guy opposite Tyrell Williams. But, yeah, like you said, uh, Derek Carr is is throwing the ball eight times a game to Darren Waller. They're rushing the ball 25 times a game with Josh Jacobs. Like, how many targets is Zay Jones realistically going to see? I don't really know. Yep, not a really fantasy For some reason, they just won't play Hunter Renfro. Just get Hunter Renfro on the field. What's going on? Uh, of course, you know football better than they do, so. That's true. Gruden, what does he know? <laughs> yeah, 100 million, 100 million reasons to let him make the decisions. Uh, You're three and two. I really can't say shit. <laughs> <laughs> I really can't say anything. Um... I don't, don't I, feel, I don't even want to talk about the Jets. We 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 went, we went over them already, but I'm not talking about the Jets. Now the Eagles. Jordan Howard has taken over from Miles Sanders and is the new the new bell cow in Philadelphia. Who would have thunk it? Me. I know you, but I know you, but me. Who Lance. else? Who else would have thought it? No, not even 2019. Me didn't even believe it. The 2018 me was all in, and uh, I don't know. This is not really how I expected it to go when I traded for Miles Sanders two weeks ago, but. Uh, <laughs> It is what it is. Eh, here's the Jets. Maybe Sanders gets in in some more exciting games. I don't think so. No, nah, I don't think so either. Um, Ravens, Steelers. I, you, you would be the expert in this game. We kind of went over the Steelers side of it already. Um, Ravens side. I didn't see anything off except for Lamar. But is that what what, what happened with the 161 yards? I didn't get to see anything but the overtime. Um, basically. Every team is just decided we're just going to blitz Lamar Jackson and, and see what happens. And he's not being able to make them pay. Um, for whatever reason, he's not taking the downfield shots that he was taking in week one and week two that everyone thought, oh, my God, he's progressed. He's not taking those shots anymore. Um, yeah, it's just weird. He had his probably worst, one of his worst games as a pro. Uh, the three interceptions, I would say two of them weren't really his fault. One of them was a just like a clear P.I. Actually, no, one of them wasn't his fault. The other two were his fault. But. Yeah, his worst game as a pro, it was just ugly. Um, just an ugly game overall. Not much else to say. Hopefully he bounces back, but uh, I'm starting to think that Lamar Jackson is not the guy who we saw in week one and week two. No, really? I'm, I'm shocked. I'm just as shocked as you are. Shocker. And I'll tag on to that. I don't think Marquise Brown is a wide receiver. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, I know. Oh, the world we live in. Um, it's also crazy that Josh Gordon is not wide receiver one. You know I was going to throw him in there somehow. Um, it's coming. Can it please at some point? I mean, I, I can't, out of pride, I can't bench him, but damn. Well, actually, you know what's going to happen is the Patriots are going to trade for AJ Green and it's all going to be moot. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I thought they were trading for Stefan Diggs. Hang on. <laughs> I don't care. Either <laughs> one. I'll be so mad. If <laughs> for both of them. No way. Can you imagine? That was so much fun. Do Gordon like that? Um, Bills Titans, another slow paced game. Uh, nothing really out of the ordinary here. Derrick Henry rushed a lot. Mariota did not throw for a lot. Josh Allen was healthy, good sign, but nothing really else to talk about in this game. Yeah, a pretty mech game all around. The Bills defense, probably the only takeaway I have is the Bills defense is super legit, and yep. uh, Derrick Henry is probably one of the more consistent running backs in the league at this point. Yep. Uh, well, all right. Let's don't buy the hype on the Titans receivers like we've been trying to say all year. Yeah. Let's not. Yeah. Not none of that. Um. We have about 15 minutes left in the show, so let's speed through these last few games. Um. Broncos Chargers. Chargers offense looked awful. Uh. The Broncos defense was killing. Well, specifically Keenan Allen. He had 18 yards on four catches or something stupid like that. And Philip Lindsay is good, <laughs> despite all the concerns. Uh, Philip Lindsay is very very good. Yeah, he's great. Um, just unfortunately, he's splitting with Royce Freeman. Uh, Lindsay had 15 carries. Freeman had 13. 
Uh, if, if Freeman ever goes down, I think Lindsay will be just fantastic. But until then, um, he's going to split um, the charges backfield. What did you think about that? I saw Melvin Gordon got 12 carries. Austin Eckler only got three. But Austin Eckler somehow also had 16 targets. Yeah. Don't forget that the Chargers were, they're just so low on actual receivers right now. Like Mike Williams has is dealing with his old man back and, you know, Travis Benjamin is Travis Benjamin. So they just, everything they could try to get to Eckler, like out of the slot, out of the backfield. But a lot of it wasn't really going anywhere. He had a couple big plays, but it was just a lot of, you know, dink and dunk for PPR points, basically. And he yeah. had that fumble, hit that fumble up right on the goal line. That, that was killing yeah, that yep. was right. It could have made it 17 7 and a half. That was real bad. That was brutal. But the Chargers office looked out of sorts all day. It didn't look like I'm sure once they start looking better against teams with worse offenses, like this Eckler 16 targets a game will will work if they want to do it. But as Gordon gets more involved, I think this might be one of those sell Eckler for what you can because he's still got 16 targets with Gordon in the um in the lineup. I don't see him getting this many touches moving forward as soon as Gordon gets, you know, up to speed again. Yeah, that's fair. I think I'm selling. I'm going to try and sell Eckler this weekend. Yep. Uh, Packers Cowboys, Aaron Jones with the absolute game of his life. Four touchdowns, just, you know, waved goodbye to whoever, who, who was chasing him on that wave into the end zone because that was brutal. Uh, I know what you're talking about. I don't remember who it was. It was very disrespectful, though, so I love it. Yep. Um, if anybody listening missed it, uh, as Aaron Jones walked into the end zone, he waved Howard, at the Aaron Jones. Oof. just waved at him walking into the end zone. It was just brutal, super disrespectful, um, but funny. Uh, Dak had some nice garbage time yards. Uh, Amari Cooper was just insane. I don't, I can't believe Derek Carr like tried to ruin this guy. Uh, he looks so good in Dallas. It's incredible. Yeah, it's crazy. Cooper is like, I think Jair Alexander was shadowing him all night. And Cooper's put up a, 11 catches on 14 yards for 226 and a touchdown on Jair Alexander, who's like one of the emerging young star cornerbacks in this league. Yeah. Uh, Derek Carr, again, just tried to ruin this man's career. I can't believe it. Um, Colts and Chiefs, Sunday nighter. Um, the Chiefs office did not look good. Um, Mahomes got hurt, uh, sprained his ankle, looked like he, uh, again. Um, Shady fumbled and then never saw the field again. Um, and what's his first name? Pringle. I can't remember his first name. Uh, I don't know. Mr. I have no clue. Mr. Pringle. Sure. Mr. Pringle. Um, The latest of the Chiefs, I guess, the latest Chiefs receiver to come in and have a single good game. You can't realistically go pick up Pringle, right? You, you can't. There's too many mouths to feed in that offense. And, you know, the Demarcus Robinson next week for, you know, one catch and 10 yards while Michael Hardman goes off for 1,500 yards. I don't know, man. It's This offense is nuts. I don't get it. Yeah, Byron Pringle. Um, I mean, what's the point? Like, you're you're act- at this point, you're actually just like throwing darts at a board between Pringle, Hardman, and um, Robinson. Sammy Watkins has also been super disappointing. So, um, I think Tyreek probably is going to come back next week or the week after, and I think everything everyone falls in line behind him again. So, I'm excited for that to happen. Uh, where's that post on Reddit uh, that said to bench Sammy for the next two weeks because he's actually like there was a lizard person and he needs the sun or something. And it was a night game and a dome game, which is why he didn't play well. I just rolled my eyes so hard. I think I popped a blood vessel or something like that. Hey, the the dude is two for two. So next time the Chiefs have a game in the sun, we'll see if Sammy plays well. And then he might actually be proven to be a lizard person. Sammy has actually been awful since week one. (laughs) Since week one? Yeah. (laughs) It's really bad. It's it's pretty crazy. Um, Uh, Did you mention Marlon Mack? I feel like I need to mention Marlon Mack. Yep. Uh, 29 carries, 132 yards. My my newest my newest son for my fantasy team. Goodbye, James Conner. Hello, Marlon Mack. Um, just I cannot. I don't want to get into this trade I made, but you know what the trade is. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yep, yep. Yep. Marlon Mack is. Uh, yeah, he looked good. But how many times he can he can take 30 carries? I don't know. But boy, yeah, he looked good. Very, I'm hoping, very good. Let me count the weeks. I'm hoping for at least uh 10 more times, and that'll get me through the playoffs. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah. That, that is very fair. Um, yeah, and just off mention, Jacoby Brissett didn't have a great game, but he has been super consistent and low end, you know, the de- de- decent QB streamer still owned in less than 50% of leagues, I think. So good option there. Um, last game, I guess, well, we've been kind of mentioning it on and off. Uh, Browns of 49ers, Baker, Baker got benched. He's been awful. Uh, Matt Breda, Tevin Coleman. They're, they're both good. They're both startable for me anyways. Uh, Breda had 114 yards last time I checked. Coleman at 87. They're just, yeah, they're both startable. Yeah, unfortunately, um, this is what we saw, what we thought the Niners backfield was going to be, was just like a split 50-50. But I mean, they're that good on the ground. Kyle Shanahan is that smart somehow. He's scheming up all these crazy plays. Um, 
and they're just they're gonna make it work uh, unfortunately neither of them really has like too crazy of a ceiling since they are splitting but uh i, I think as far as you know flex options even low and right wide uh, running back twos i think it's gonna work out sure and that ends our uh our game discussions for the for the week oh uh, unless you want to talk about Debo samuel um he had a nice week too but don't care no, nothing really since no none of the none of the sf wide receivers are are valuable to me pettis samuel uh marquis goodwin i think they're all just like bit players basically like they kind of just they fill in where they can but it's mostly going to be kittle in the run game yeah it's it feel like they never the, the niners never actually run that many plays every time i look at one of their box scores and just watch them but they just rack up so many rushing yards that it doesn't really make a difference for them uh all right let's move on our weekly segment do you want to do panic or move or moving up first uh i am here to panic all right that's what fantasy football is about who are you panicking on odell beckham jr um yeah. oh boy <laughs> um now i didn't think baker was you know worth the top five pick or whatever but i, I thought you know hey he's gonna be great uh, he's probably going to be an upgrade on Eli, which means Odell is going to be at least as good as he was with the Giants. But uh, no, that has not happened. Um, he's let me look at his last stats. They're disgustingly ugly. Uh, two catches tonight for 27 yards on six targets. Two catches last week for 20 yards on seven targets. Uh, six for 56. And then he had the blow up game against the Jets. But that was like he had like 80 yard slant. It's not looking great. No, no, not not great. Yeah, that the whole Browns offense, except for Nick Chubb, I will say. But yeah, you're right, Odell. That's a that's a panic button. Um, my panic button. I don't. Is it? Can I? Am I still allowed to panic on OJ Howard? I mean, it's it's kind of late on that one. It's past panic at this point. It's just like it's full straight drop at this point. Yeah, like the um, the alarm has been pulled. The sirens are going. The 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 ambulance and the fire trucks are on their way. Like it's already over. All right. Well, I'm gonna panic on Devonta Freeman then. Um, as you much you know, he's gonna be bad. You should have listened to me. He's bad. Howard or Freeman? Freeman. I was super in on Howard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Devonta Freeman. Uh, the Atlanta run game is terrible. Um, he can't get into a groove, and now Ido Smith has worked himself into like a 55-45 timeshare. It's not an ideal situation. Um, Freeman had his week saved by a touchdown, uh, rece- a nine-yard receiving touchdown. And honestly, if he doesn't score a touchdown, you're looking at like 2.5 yards of carry from him all year. Not been good. If you can trade him, do so. Yeah, it's it's really bad. Um, I, I'm not even sure what's going on. Like, I thought he was going to be bad. I didn't think he was going to be this bad. I mean, I think our uh, the PFF grades, they have Smith at like a 67 runner like grade and Freeman's like 50. The only reason Freeman's look like he's still playing is because he's the best run blocker on the team. It's ridiculous. I guess he catches passes too. Or sorry, best pass blocker. Excuse me. Right. Yeah. Uh, if he was a better run blocker, that'd be that'd be incredible. Right? Just <laughs> blocking for himself. Some Mister Perfect stuff going on. He was playing full. Could you imagine Devontae Freeman playing fullback? Darius <laughs> Leonard would just like pick him up and just throw him back into the running back. Yeah. Um, uh, someone else I need to panic on. Let me think. Um. I think I think my panic meter is a little bit low this weekend. It's not that big of a deal. I think everything makes sense. Uh, maybe a little bit of panic on Aaron Rodgers, but not quite. It's not his fault that you know Aaron Jones scored four touchdowns. But yeah, you know, yeah, he's just taking a backseat, taking it easy. But it is, Which is I fair. Could probably know his touchdown rate is insanely low. Well, not lower than Kyler Murray's, but you know. Well, yeah, but he has six touchdowns in the season through eight games. I get that they're four and one, but. Um, Something to keep an eye on. Yep. Um, I guess my panic, it's not really panic, it's more of a move down kind of thing, is uh, we kind of talked about earlier, but the Rams receivers not named Cooper Cup. Um, Robert Woods has not been super, super good. He had the one game last week where he had 15 targets, but and 164 yards, but otherwise he has three games under 50 yards. Um, he needs a big play to be successful. And with, like we said before, with Everett, with Cup, um, he's not really getting those opportunities and he's consistently mediocre. I guess I would say with a chance to boom, but it's not really something that I would, I would count on. And if somebody wants to buy into the Rams offense, then I would let them. If I was reading a draft preview and someone wrote the line, he's consistently mediocre with the chance to boom. I would absolutely never draft that person. Yeah. Consistently mediocre with the chance to boom is very hurtful. Yeah. But that's kind of what he's been. Like just you watched I watched that entire game on Thursday and it's just you don't really notice Robert Woods. Like yeah. I didn't 
there's no plays where I was like, oh yeah, he's gonna, you know, he's just kind of okay here, eight yards here, eight yards there. Didn't really do anything. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, like, his role in the offense is is just that he's the middle guy, you know. Like, yeah. Cook is taking the top off. Cup is doing all the scoring and the and the underneath stuff. Woods is in the in between, and Goff can't throw in between. So you know, it's unfortunate. But that's why I'm panicking. Air quotes, quote unquote, panicking. But you know, all right. Um, well, who do you have uh, moving up? Uh, is it cheating to say Christian McCaffrey? Like, can I just say like he is just number one by far? Like, I wouldn't trade him for like six different players. Like anyone, I I wouldn't give up half my team for Christian McCaffrey. That guy's amazing. He um, said cheat code. He's unfair. Like he's disgustingly unfair. There was like a clip on YouTube or on Twitter of this one particular linebacker on the Jaguars who tried to tackle him like five different times. And each time was just, he was missing worse than the last. <laughs> yeah, it was real bad. Um, my moving on up guy, uh, it's a guy we talked about, Sonny Michelle. I think, I, I tend to think this is the beginning of, of good things. Um, I think, like we talked about, I think he's shaking the rust off a little bit. He's going to be the primary ball carrier. Sure, he's not going to play more than like 55% of snaps, but the Patriots are going to play for him ahead most of the time. So I don't really think that's a problem. Um, I'm I'm in on Sonny Michel. Um, my moving up, we talked about him already. Gerald Everett, um, tight end is just a desolate wasteland of talent. Uh, he was the top tight end performer this week. Um, even with Darren Fells's, you know, two touchdown performance, do not add Darren Fells for the love of God. Um, yeah, he just he's getting the targets again in in the Rams offense, and with them running less, uh, with the girly concerns, he's a good option. Yeah, that's fair. Um, I don't know, man. It's crazy. It's I I think. I have a theory that Sean McVay, this is Sean McVay's next step in his offensive evolution. Like he used to always come out in, what is it? 11 personnel and just run the same sets over and over and over. But now, you know, they're actually getting the tight end more involved. So I think Gerald Everett, there's a chance that he might actually, you know, be something. It's okay. The lesson is never chase t- t- uh, tight end points, right? Of course, now Tyler Higby is going to go off for 160 yards next week, and Everett will have one target for three yards. Yeah, it's kind of weird considering they signed Higby to the extension, like the big extension. Yep. So maybe Higby's a better blocker. I don't know. I don't know, man. This team's so confusing to me. Ever since <laughs> Todd Gurley, Todd, we didn't even talk about Todd Gurley during the game. 15 carries for 51 yards and two touchdowns. Uh, not great, Bob. No, but I mean, he's clearly still the guy at the goal line. Yeah, I mean that's true, but like, it's it, last year he was like catching like three, four, or five passes a game. Yeah, um, he was ripping off like I think his long was like twelve yards. He was like ripping off like eighteen yard runs consistently. But no, he's just bad. Oh yeah, no, Gurley's he's not Gurley anymore. He's he's a shell of himself. Honestly, it's actually crazy. It's so sad, actually. Yeah. Uh, who's your next moving up? Um. I have been trying to find one that's been impressive, but can't really um, let me think. Well, why don't you go first and I'll come back around. All right. I'm going to go very off the board here and go completely against what we said earlier in the show. Uh, Deontay Johnson from the Steelers. I know that they're on the third string quarterback and all this, but he's been pretty consistent um, since Dante Moncrief got benched. At this point, he's the number two receiver behind Juju Smith-Schuster. Uh, he had eight targets last week. Uh, he scored a touchdown in the two weeks before the Baltimore game. Uh, he's an impressive third rounder, and he's, especially now with James Washington, uh, possibly missing the next game. I think Johnson's a good, you know, fill in wide receiver three flex if you have some people on bye. And if they keep feeding him the ball, he could be could be pretty decent. Yeah, his stats actually look a lot better than I would have thought. Um, granted, he only had 27 yards this game, but the targets are the targets are more impressive than I would have thought. Which is, you know, a big deal, of course. Um, let's see. Have I figured out a moving on up yet? I really haven't. I think last week mine was Corlin Sutton, so can't really say him again. Although I do think he's still moving on up. Mm, what about my guy? Nope, he did not have a good game. I thought he had a much better game. <laughs> <laughs> Who'd you look at? Uh, DJ Moore. Oh. I mean, he's not he like an all right game. Yeah, he's not an all right game. It's just like he's Kyle Allen is limited. Like, what is he going to do? He can't float DJ Moore and Curtis Samuel and freaking Greg Olson had zero yards in this game. Yeah, that was uh, that was rough. I'm not gonna complain though. Yeah, I got no one. Um, All right, it's, it's everyone who was good exploded, and you know we already knew. Oh, you know what? Who's moving on up? I think Michael Gallup is still moving on up. Big fan of his game. I think the Cowboys offense can can support two receivers, uh, especially if they're gonna play from behind all the time. And Gallup is, I mean, for him to look like this after coming off a meniscus tear, it's pretty impressive. Yeah, I think we talked about him in one of our preseason shows. Just you know, if Dak was able to get get a little bit more accurate on those deep shots, then Gallup had you know 
had a chance to blow up, and and he is. Don't, don't, be, don't be honest. You touted him as a, as a wide receiver sleeper. Did I? I don't remember. That was a long time ago. It was like five weeks ago. It's not that long. I'm old now, man. Come on. <sighs> That's fair. Uh, all right. So that just about wraps it up for us. Um, anything that we should be looking forward to to next week? Anything um, the yeah, I guess players should be keeping an eye out for in week six? Um... Chiefs at Texans is going to be a fantastic game. Mahomes versus Watson. I'm definitely looking forward to that. Um, Chris Herndon, hopefully coming back, saving my fantasy team from OJ Howard. (laughs) Um, Oh, my God. Actually, week five. God, get your popcorn ready. Redskins at Dolphins. Yeah, you know what? That that's the game I want to watch. I just Ooh. want I just want to see if two teams can lose at the same time. Oh my god. If this game ends in a tie, I'll I'll be so happy. Like a 6-6 six, six tie. <laughs> fantastic. No, I I need Terry McLaurin to get like three touchdowns. Could we not have this end in a 6-6 six, six tie? Like I would say like I would start Terry McLaurin against the Dolphins of course, but I don't know who the quarterback's going to be. As long as it's not Haskins, he should be fine. Yeah, I'm reading a, a headline right here. Bill Callahan, Redskins presser, Dwayne Haskins is not a contender to start versus the Dolphins. Yeah, so okay. Was, yeah. I mean, with McCoy, he had three catches for 50-something yards against the Pats, so I'll take it. That's actually true. McLaurin's really good. Yeah, he's actually... He's moving on a three-catch, 51-yard effort. I guess he can. I really like McLaurin. Yeah, McLaurin's legit. Um, otherwise, yeah, the Chiefs-Texans game is going to be great. Um, Cowboys should absolutely dismantle the Jets, so... If Michael Gallup is somehow not owned yet, please do. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, and what am I saying? Of course, I'm looking forward to you know what I spelled out earlier. Eli jogging off the bench, to throw three touchdowns against Brady. Oh, could we not just? You got the two like they got the two Super Bowls on the Pats already. Could we just not? Let's let us have this one, okay? No. Let us have this one. Week six against the <laughs> is much more important than any Super Bowl. <laughs> okay, give us back 2007 and we'll give you this game. All right? Oh, man. That's the deal, Eli. All right. Yeah, I think know, that man. does it for us, guys. Um, thank you for listening to the Fantasy Edge. Uh, for Kevin Hall, I'm Jonathan Chen, and we'll see you next week.